It means that signal. We need more power. week and um, you know once again we have what I think is a really fantastic package. I mean I'm a huge fan of special editions going back to the Laserdisc game. So I have very high expectations for what I want on DVDs. So part of the deal we made for the one was you know we want a, a really packed special edition and they were like yeah that's great. Because you know a lot of these TV shows come out and all it is is the episode. It's like why don't you just watch it on Netflix? You know, you want something that's loaded, like a really good baked potato or a really nice good night Comic Con party. Um, and if you look at the DVD, I mean, you'll see this audio commentary on every episode. And I can tell you, those were rough days for Steve and I. We did entire seasons in one day. So by the time we got to like episode ten, it'd be like. What episode is this? What happened on the show? What? What is this Star Trek? We, we didn't know what was going on. Um, One of them we had to do twice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because uh, uh, I had a corrupt file. We had to record it again. Yeah, that kind of sucked. One episode uh, I hadn't even seen. Yeah. Oh my god. That was quiet. Yeah. There's an episode from the second season. Steve hadn't seen. So the first time he watched it was when we were doing commentary. He's like, "This isn't so bad." <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, it was, it was really we won't funny. reveal which one that was. No, no, it's funny. It was the one I directed. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> to work on a show like this, where every episode is different, rather than a serialized television show, the question where you really is, don't have a lot of would range. Would you rather work on an anthology show or um, a show that's more linear than? I, how about I like anthology. The only, yeah. the only not so great is because every episode's different. Sure. Everything happens in the same town, so we go in and out of the episodes. We don't get to spend as much time with one another, so that's the downside. But the upside is that every episode is is a short film. Every if we could do it, is yeah. so unique, and your the sets that you go to, the locations you go to, the costumes, the comedy, the sci-fi, the action, to you know. If we like could do the same, like be actor, like a set group of actors that each do an episode and be the same actresses in the same and different episodes, more of an ensemble, yeah. like that does different episodes that can cohesively work together, that would be, that would be perfect. Yeah. That would be like ideal. Then, then we'd always together. have a job, but we'd, we'd get to do different <laughs> genres. <laughs> of, yeah. I can tell you, for those of you who may not be as familiar with the show, even though we, we sold this as a traditional anthology show, a la The Twilight Zone or Alfred Hitchcock Presents, what Steve and I uh, always conceived and executed was the idea that it was a shared universe, yeah. like comic books, okay. or, you know, so that, that yeah. even though each episode... Have you ever thought of having some crossover? Well, we have a lot of crossovers. Yeah, our characters do go in and out. Okay. So that, yeah, so we still get to spend time with one another and see one another, but just not as often as one we One character who's the star of the the show, and because the show's a really big success worldwide, uh, internationally, we've traveled a lot to promote the show, and so I think people have bonded as a result of that. Many people yeah. who never even met on the individual episodes, and they've really gotten to know each other and become a femme fatale family, which is really nice. But to answer your question, you know, I would think if we were just doing a strict anthology show, it would be a little disappointing. I love to be able to, one episode can be a comedy, and one right. can be a, a, a thriller, and one could be a classic noir tribute, and another episode is sci-fi or horror. Um, but it would be disappointing that if we met a really cool character that we couldn't revisit. So through our format, it's great to be able to go back to those people that we like, or, you know, um, or find intriguing, or underserved, and do more with them. And, and in that sense, you know, it's the best of both worlds. And I, I love that about the so show. So much. Like, I'm going to work on my powers and bring people back from the dead if we want to. <laughs> the only problem is you get a lot of pictures from people saying, hey, you know, if I come back, this is what I can do. <laughs> When you start working hey, on the third season, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. have you started working on the third season yet? Or are you first well, production? On? You know, I was saying this the last group. Um, we haven't made an official announcement about anything Comic Con because there's a couple of moving parts. But I think by New York Comic Con we're gonna be able to make an uh, announcement okay. about the the future. But let's just say that the Crimson Cow brand is a, a bright future. Sure. <laughs> Thankfully. So uh, you know, it's too much fun to stop doing. Uh, and now, and we have just such a great group of talent that we really enjoyed working with and want to continue to work with. So, and it's um, not in girls and guys. Well, for, yeah, absolutely. Like, like you were saying earlier, it's what 51. I think it's 51 percent to 49 percent. Um, yeah, the women. demographic yeah. is very split. It's, it's very split. Empowering women roles that you know, like in the old days in these genre films, men had these roles, and now we are like Nikki's a mom boss. So you know, and, and well, Stephanie and, did an episode where she starts off as a very demure. Uh, assistant at a video game company, and by the end, uh, 
be something completely different. <laughs> Girl Scout gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how wrong, but she's. <laughs> <laughs> We've all, we all go wrong. One of the biggest flops about Mike. I mean, Red, I, mean I, I will say, that is one of the great things about the DVD. Because we really hoped the show would be embraced as our. We always wanted to put it as a cult film. Obviously, we're budgetarily challenged, but I think we do something. It's a good looking show with good actors, um, you know, good writing, and, and you know, uh, the network positioned it as one thing, but when it came out on DVD, E1 really, uh, I think, educated people about what the show was, and the reviews have been fantastic, and people really embraced it, and a whole new audience has discovered it, which is really what we hoped, and people got what we were trying to do, and that was super gratifying. The thing about second season is, uh, uh, we really were more ambitious, we got cocky after the first season. You know, we did stuff like White Flower, which was like in a hotel room. My like second season, we're doing sci-fi with twin doubles in the yeah. future, and we're doing superheroes, and we're doing um, you know these huge for us huge episodes, and it was insane. And it really made the second season logistically complicated and daunting, and you know uh, destroyed the budget. Yeah, yeah. but it yeah. was. Uh, it looked amazing. But it was it was yeah. good. It was good. I mean, I remember. When Steve and Darren came to me with his idea and said, we want to do this episode where the same actress plays the evil version, the good version, my first reaction was, oh, Enemy Within, this is great. You know, Mitt Mirror Mirror. And I'm like, how the fuck are we going to do that? We can't do that. <laughs> you know, I always like to get excited and then I have to think about the reality of doing reality it. And I'm like, wait right? a second. I don't know. But and then, then, he did it. then he convinced me to do this yeah. stupid superhero episode, which crosses a fortune. But it ended up being great. And we, we, we saw how to make it more noir because what he did was strictly like sort of a superhero. And so we brought the framing device in. We brought Jen Rose's character. Jen played, um, I would say, Dirty DA, you know, she's a district attorney who is not on the up and up. And, um, you know, that was really fun. We wanted to... Well, and you were originally supposed to die in that. There was all this stuff where Libra yeah. came in the window and killed you, and then you're like, that stuff all went, woo! That was, <laughs> I'm not dead. <laughs> it, it, it was better. You lost a really cool scene, but yeah. you stayed alive. And so it was a good trade-off. Yeah. Yeah. Now we don't know what happened to her. It's very awesome when somebody does die. It's nice, we don't know if they're technically not going to show up again because we have Tiffany here. You know, you're back. To the dead. She's like the medium. <laughs> I mean, we sort of influenced by like the seasonal arcs of um, Buffy a little bit, you know how, and, and that's why our season finale sort of wrap up, even though it's an anthology, like sort of, we get to a destination, like the first season, we sort of wrap up the story of revenge and, 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 and women who have been wronged um, with Madison character and Catherine and Christine, um, and sort of hope, we were originally gonna solve the mystery of Will, but the network didn't wanna solve it, so now it's sort of not quite, as clear as what we had intended. And you lose the commentary, you'll understand. Um, but then the second season was all about the battle for the soul of Cuesta Verde and, you know, um, all these political things that were going on with the district and, um, and the city. And so that sort of wraps up in Libra, um, which was, you know, which was really fun. And we got to bring back a lot of characters. Sheena Marie, who now is in Vanderpump Rules, came back. And Steve Brell's back. And um, um, a couple other people who I don't remember. Oh, you think Christine Donnellan came back? You know, so we just, people love when they see the characters in the previous episodes come back, especially when it's not expected. And, um, you know, we've been lucky enough to work with some fun people. You work with Vivica Fox. I love working with Vivica Fox. I have a huge girl crush on her. I'm just saying. Maddie Testerboos. You work with those, right? Yeah, and opposite end of the spectrum, Chris did an episode called Hell Hath No Furious, which was like, we just wanted to do something wild and grindhouse, and I mean, we did, we, we pulled out, we scratched the negative, and we, you know, we did uh, jump frames, and you know, we did this 80s, um, classic those 80s TV, TV credits at the end, and it was we wanted to do the whole episode, like the opening credits that way, and the network was like, no, people would be confused, and we did it for the end credits, and um, it was great, she just goes and kicks ass, and, um, you know, it's like uh, Assault on Precinct 13, John Carpenter, um, and he, uh, he, uh, he kills our composer, Joe does a cameo in that, and he gets murdered. Oh, really? He does a voiceover in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I remember, you know, we also had the, uh, a different costume designer in that, who's doing Rise of the Planet of the Apes now, and she just came up with some really great outfits for all 
the girls. We just felt they love it. They, they had this deadly trike that was, if, you know, the heroic trio was a famous Hong Kong. This is the anti-heroic trio. They're like the evil trio, the Furies. And they were so much fun. You know, everybody just wanted to see more of them. And I, I think we will. And, and it's so much, they're so much fun. Um, I mean, they should do an action figure because they're all like so interesting. They really should. It's a great episode, too. It's all over the place. It's funny. It's like intense. It's awesome. The idea at that it was the end of the season, we'd done Lever, which cost a fortune. So we're going to do a Grindhouse episode, which is going to be, be really cheap to do, and well, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was good. And, and, and you know, we had Sorry, to sorry to interrupt, we're not there wrap for the next panel. Oh, okay. Um, well, listen, guys, thank you so much because, thank you know, you. Yeah, all those you. shows in Hall H, they don't need the support. You know, people are going to watch them, they know about them. Sure. A show like ours, to get the word out. You know, while I have you here, sure. can you just uh, introduce yourself and let us know about your episode? Yes. Hi, I'm Kristen DeLuca in Hell Hath No Furies. It's the second last episode of season two. And I'm on the back of the DVD cover, so you can see my sexy outfit. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I've got one. They got me. <laughs> Thank you. Can you uh, introduce yourself? Tell me about the episode. Okay. You know, we got another round table coming up. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I'm Stephanie Danielson from the show Femme Fatales on Cinemax. I play Emily in Speed Date. I'm just going to step out for a second. But we have enough. Yeah, but we are doing more interviews and more people coming. I gotta sneak out of here somehow. Thank you. It means the best shit. It is. Kind of a, one of those ones where you move all the numbers around.